We all want our lives to be fruitful, and our Lord reveals to us the central truth of our faith in the Gospel from St. John today about fruitful, fruitfulness in the spiritual life. He says, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. We're like the grain, he tells us, and unless the grain dies in the earth, it cannot produce fruit. Commenting on this passage from St. John's Gospel, St. Augustine says, we have to understand correctly what our Lord means when he tells us we should not love our life lest we lose it, but we should hate our life so that we can gain it. Augustine says the part of our lives that we must hate is that part of our lives that is disordered. The corruption that is in each person as a result of original sin. We must hate that, Augustine says. And he says that part of ourselves that we must love is the presence of God in each of our souls. And we must love that so much that it overcomes all else. Friendship with Christ is a very beautiful and magnificent thing. And in the friendship, no matter how far we may fall away, or no matter how often we may stray, our Lord always invites us back and always extends his friendship as long as we hate that part of ourselves which is sinful and love that part of ourselves which is the image of the triune God within our souls. This is the key to bearing fruit in the spiritual life. It's not easy to be a Catholic these days. The church is going through a period of purification. But if we trust in our Lord, based on this passage from John's Gospel, this purification, this dying to disorder and corruption, will bear fruit. Perhaps the church is going through this purification to prepare it for times to come. Only our Lord knows the reason. God the Father is nonetheless very confident in the human situation. And because of the Father's confidence, we have hope. Hope has to be based in reality. The virtue of theological hope is not just simply some mindless optimism. Where does our hope come from? Where does the confidence of God the Father come from? It comes from the fact that the Father knows that the Son not only spoke these words about dying to self, but gave his own life as the ransom for the many. And so it's the reality 
of the self-sacrificial love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, on the cross, which provides the reason for God the Father's confidence and gives us the reason for hope. He invites us to imitate him. If you want to bear fruit, die to yourselves. No matter how heavy the cross that any individual human person is asked to carry, the person carries it along the Via Crucis with our Lord Jesus Christ, and the grace is always given so that that cross can be carried. St. Paul reminds us in the first reading that in carrying our crosses, we ought to be cheerful givers. Be generous in dying to self. Be generous in service to others. Do so with joy and with cheerfulness. Certainly the meaning of these words were at the heart of the life of St. Lawrence the deacon. He has special relevance to those of us who are entrusted uh, as stewards of the church's ecclesiastical goods because in the third century in the Church of Rome, that's precisely what his role was as a deacon, to be the steward, the administrator of the church's temporal goods, to care for the widows and other needy persons in service, in the example of the self-sacrificial and humble love of Christ. He's one of seven deacons from the Church of Rome who were martyred during the persecution of the Emperor Valerian in the third century. And you know the tradition about him. He was burned alive, and there's a kind of a dark humor associated with this according to the tradition. Supposedly, he said to his tormentors at one point during the burning, I'm done on this side, you can turn me over now. Talk about a cheerful giver. Our own lives may not require the same sense of self-sacrifice that we see in the martyrs such as the deacon Lawrence, but nonetheless, we're called on each day to make acts of self-sacrificial love. Blessed Pope, John Paul, Blessed Pope John the 23rd says in the Journal of the Soul that he learned each day to welcome the small humiliations that came, to accept these cheerfully and as opportunities for grace. And in this way, he walked with the Lord Jesus in the Via Crucis. Augustine, in commenting on the feast that we celebrate today, the feast of the martyr St. Lawrence the Deacon, says that in his earthly life, he was the minister of the chalice of the most precious blood of our Lord. And in his earthly death, he shed his own blood in union with the redemptive act of our Lord on the cross. St. Lawrence understood the example of Christ, his humble self-sacrificial love. He knew the confidence of the Father because of it. He had hope based on that reality. And through the grace of God, he lived his life as an able steward and deacon, and then with the ultimate example of self-sacrificial love in martyrdom. At this Mass, we join with our Lord in the sacrifice 
at Calvary, the unbloody sacrifice. We join with the apostles and all the martyrs, Lawrence and the great host who are present with us. And we prepare ourselves to become one with our Lord in the Eucharist, in his sacred body and blood, so that we can draw closer to him, so that we can be healed, so that we can be strengthened, so that we can be purified, so that we can be elevated and continue to act as his disciples in the world, as a sign to the world that there re is reason for hope. All is not lost. And the reason for that hope is the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>